All right, so this week's topic is sports nutrition and supplements. Nutrition is the science of certain food substances, nutrients, and what they do and how they interact within the body. They can grow, repair, and maintain all body cells. They can help regulate body processes. And of course, nutrients can supply energy for all of our cells within our body. So for the purpose of this class, we are going to stay focused on the macro and micronutrients within nutrition. So the two classes of nutrients are macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients consists of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, while micronutrients consists of vitamins, minerals, and water. All right, so starting with carbohydrates, this is our body's most efficient source of energy. And what that means is that usually carbohydrates are digested very quickly, especially simple carbs. So these usually contain refined sugars, but not very many essential vitamins and minerals. And some examples of these would be fruit juices, high fructose corn syrup, and then some dairy products like milk and yogurt, as well as honey and sugar. Then we have complex carbs, which take a lot longer to digest in the body, and they are usually packed with a lot more good essential vitamins and minerals, as well as fiber. So some examples of these would be vegetables, whole grains, cereals, pastas, and beans. Your brain also uses carbs strictly for energy. So when people try to reduce their carbohydrates within their diet, it can actually slow brain activity and start to starve the brain. And that's why a lot of people feel very foggy or can't concentrate when they try to cut out carbohydrates from their diet. It's because our brain runs on carbs for energy. And lastly, there are four calories in one gram of carbohydrate. So this is a good way to calculate how many calories you're taking in. If you know that something is 20 grams of carbohydrates, you multiply by four, and that would be 80 calories total. Fats is our most concentrated source of energy. What that means is instead of four calories per one gram like carbohydrates, in one gram of fat, there are actually nine calories. So it's our most concentrated source of energy. Fats are necessary for normal growth and development. We have a lot of different types of fats though, and some are better than others. So saturated fats usually come from our animal sources like meat, milk, and cheese. Unsaturated fats, would be things like olive oil, avocados, nuts, and salmon, some things you see in the picture down below. And trans fatty acids usually come from processed foods with a lot of processed sugar within it. So this would be cookies, donuts, fast foods, any packaged or processed foods. It's recommended that less than 25% of your total daily calories are consisting of saturated fat. And again, I mentioned it's our most concentrated source of energy at nine calories per one gram of fat. Proteins are next. This is what makes up the major structural components of our body. Proteins are very important for growth, maintenance, and repair of all of our body tissues, but especially muscles. And proteins are further broken down into smaller subsections called amino acids. And there are essential and non-essential amino acids. And what that means is that essential amino acids have to be supplied by your diet. So your body cannot make them on their own. So that's why it's so important to eat good lean meats and good proteins that will um, supply those essential amino acids. So exam examples of this would be meat, fish, poultry, eggs, milk, and dairy. And just like carbohydrates, there are four calories per one gram of protein. All right, so those were our three macronutrients, carbs, fats, and proteins. Now moving on to our micronutrients, we are going to start with vitamins. So vitamins perform essential roles as regulators of many body processes. They can help aid in tissue healing and repair. And we really only talk about two groups of vitamins in this class fat-soluble and water-soluble vitamins. So fat-soluble vitamins are dissolved in fats and stored within the body. And there are four of these, and they are vitamin A, vitamin E, 
vitamin D, and vitamin K. And then we have water-soluble vitamins that are dissolved in watery solutions, and these are ones that cannot be um, gathered up and stored over time in your body. So these are ones that you need to get regularly throughout your diet on a daily basis. So examples of this would be vitamin C, all of the vitamin Bs, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, folate, and biotin. Okay, moving on to minerals. These also have to be supplied by our diet daily. Some very common ones I've listed here. So things like calcium, sodium, iron, zinc, magnesium. These are all really common ones that people might have a deficiency in. So it's important to try to make sure you're eating proper foods with good minerals because they have to be uh, supplied by your diet daily. And their last micronutrient is water. So we all know how important water is. We need it to survive, of course, on a daily basis. It also helps dissolve those water-soluble materials like our water-soluble vitamins. It can help with energy production and lifting your mood, giving you a little boost of energy. It helps aid in proper digestion. And if we don't have water, we won't be able to regulate our body temperature as well because sweating is how our body uses water to keep our temperature more regulated. So if we are dehydrated, we're not able to do this as well. And this is going to look different for everyone and your needs, um, depending on your height, your weight, and your energy expenditure. But an average adult requires about 2.5 liters of water every day. And once you are feeling thirsty, that is our first sign of dehydration. So that means you are already lacking water. So try to get on top of this and make sure you're drinking water throughout the day before you start to actually feel thirsty. All right, moving on to electrolyte requirements. These are electrically charged ions. They help maintain um, water balance outside of the cells. Some examples of these would be sodium, chloride, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. And most cases, these are replenished with a balanced diet. But if you do have deficits with your electrolytes, it can lead to things like muscle cramps um, or even dehydration and heat-related illnesses. Okay, so average dietary recommendations. Just like water, this is going to look a little bit different for each person, depending on your activity level and your body size. Um, but generally, it's recommended that carbohydrates make up 55 to 60% of your nutrition intake. Fats represent 25 to 30%, and proteins about 15%. So our current U.S. diet is a little bit different than that. We have higher amounts of fats and proteins and lower amounts of carbohydrates than what is recommended. Okay, moving on to supplements. There's really no good scientific basis for ingesting higher levels of proteins or specific vitamins and minerals above those average dietary recommendations. And even exercise really doesn't increase the need for these, like proteins, if you're working out a lot. Usually that just gets wasted. Um, supplements can sometimes give a placebo effect only. And you have to be careful with them because they are not regulated by the FDA. So they have no governing board. So they don't have to put what's actually in them on their labels. So just be very careful if you are looking into supplements because they're not regulated. No fitness professional or coach should be able to provide or distribute nutritional supplements of any kind to any person, any active person, or any athlete, and that's because they don't have the proper nutrition and health training. And um, supplements do have lots of side effects that are found um, that can actually lead to decreases in your health overall. There are a few tools we can look up supplements for. Um, one is called the Drug-Free Sport Axis. This is a website where healthcare members can check if a substance is banned or not because there are a lot of banned substances in collegiate and professional athletics. You can look at something called the Athlete Recipe Box on this website, and this gives really good examples of sample recipes of whole balanced meals for active people and athletes. And if you are interested, the NCAA website has a banned substances list. So this will contain 
contain things like supplements that are banned as well as um, other things you might not think of like caffeine limitations as well. Okay, alternate to supplements would be eating real raw whole foods. So you should be able to get all the nutrients that you need from foods without the use of supplements. Again, that's if you are the average active healthy person. Of course, if you have something like an iron deficiency, you would probably have to go on um, different vitamins and mineral medications possibly for that. But as far as supplements, most people should be able to reach their dietary needs by just eating real whole foods. Okay, we do have an assignment this week. You will have a nutrition log assignment that you have to turn in by Sunday, March 14th by midnight. The details for this assignment are in this week's module and it's labeled nutrition log. And that's where you can find the full instructions for the assignment.